Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about why I'm voting for RFK. Now, to preface this, I want to say that I'm not telling you who to vote for. Okay, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to give you the perspective of an RFK voter. So if you are a Democrat or Republican or a Biden or Trump supporter who can't imagine why somebody would vote for RFK, then it would benefit you to watch this video because it's going to improve your understanding of your opposition. If you're not willing to understand your opposition better, then you are basically surrendering your ability, surrendering your ability to persuade them in, in any way in particular. So beyond that, I also don't believe in obtrusive campaigning methods. So I'll never be the person knocking on your door trying to get you to vote in a certain way or calling you, okay? I'll never be that person because I, I don't believe in obtrusive campaigning methods. You clicked on this video, you chose to listen to me. I did not force you to do anything. I have a bumper sticker and I will upload a YouTube video. That's about the extent of my, of my campaigning for RFK. And that's, again, that's an unobtrusive campaigning method. It's not, it's not my job to, to waste your time. It's not my job to take your time out of your hands. Again, you voluntarily clicked on this, voluntarily clicked on this video. So back to RFK, why am I voting for him? Well, the, the, the primary foundational reason kind of sets up a, a lot of the other reasons. So we'll start with that. And it's basically this dichotomy between division and unity. So if you look at the average, uh, if you look at Biden and Trump and the average Democrat and Republican voter, you kind of have a cookie cutter definition of what they look like, right? The average Democrat is pro-choice, they're pro-vaccine, they're pro-gun legislation, they're pro-Black Lives Matter, pro-LGBT, right? They're, they're perhaps pro-regulation of the free market. All of those things are part of the cookie cutter definition of a Democrat. And the cookie cutter definition of a Republican is the exact opposite, okay? So it's pro, they're pro-life, they're, they're anti-vaccine, they're pro-gun, they're perhaps pro blue lives matter they're pro or anti lgbtq perhaps and they might be more of a f f pro free market right so they're against regulation of the free market now again these are cookie cutter definitions we know that there are people we know there are democrats who are pro gun we know there are republicans who are pro choice so we know there are people with nuanced beliefs that don't fall into those those cookie cutter categories, right? But the thing is, is the nature of the Democrat Republican paradigm is that those nuanced beliefs get swept under the rug. And what happens is Trump and Biden, they identify with those cookie cutter beliefs. And by extension, most of their voters do too, because their voters identify with the political party, and by extension, they identify with those cookie-cutter beliefs. Again, not everybody, but many of the voters do. This creates division. Why? Well, because all of those beliefs are opposed to each other, right? Makes the checks out. It creates cultural division. All of those cultural divides lead to division between the two parties. What does that division lead to? Well, it leads to a hindrance of organization. You can't organize if you if if half of the population disagrees with your beliefs. So you can't solve problems if half of the population is opposed to you. So what does RFK do that's different? Well, RFK doesn't point the finger at Biden and Trump. Okay? Biden and Trump love to point the finger at each other. Biden supporters love to say that if you don't vote for Biden, you're you're going to contribute to the end of democracy when Trump becomes president. Likewise, Trump says that Trump voters say the same thing. If Biden gets elected, it's going to be the end of the republic, right? They're saying the same thing, and they're saying the same thing because they fear each other. These two opposite sides of these, these cultural divides fear their opposition, okay? And they forgot about all the nuance. The people, the, the, the people making all the noise are all of the, they're kind of the, they're kind of the, the, the loud major or minority who have, well, they, they, they talk a lot, right? But most people have nuanced beliefs. But if those people choose to identify with the Republican and Democrat Party, then they contribute to the division. And again, what RFK does different is he doesn't insult his opposition. He doesn't insult Trump and Biden. He looks at Trump and Biden as an extension of the people. They are not 
so much the cause of the problems in a country. Trump and Biden are not the reason the country is going to hell, seemingly. They are symptoms of the division. And the division itself is, the, again, it's the thing that leads to the lack of organization. So it's the division that is causing the country to go to hell. It is literally the division itself. It's not Trump's policies or Biden's policies. It's the division. Because, again, you can't organize if you're divided. So what does RFK do? Well, RFK, again, he creates unity. He has nuanced beliefs that pull from both sides of this political spectrum. He doesn't identify with any of the cookie cutter any of the cookie cutter uh, identifications, right? He has those nuanced beliefs that gain support from both the Democrat and Republican Party. And the proof in that is that he is polling fairly evenly from the Democrat and Republican voters. Now, depending on what poll you look at and what week it is, he pulls more from Biden or Trump. I think right now he's pulling slightly more from Biden, but that was different two months ago. Again, he's polling fairly evenly from both camps. And that's proof, again, that he is breaking through these cultural, these cookie cutter cultural divides. And he is, he's gaining support. From, he's bringing people together again. There are anti-vaxxers and pro-vaxxers at RFK's rallies. Okay, <laughs> that's that's something that most that's something that Biden and Trump rallies are, don't have in common with RFK's rallies. There are uh, pro Blue Lives Matter and pro Black Lives Matter pe uh, people supporters at RFK's rallies. So again, as I said, RFK doesn't insult people when you insult people for their beliefs they identify with those beliefs so you're not insulting the beliefs you're insulting the person you're insulting their ego and they get defensive right they, they they grab onto their beliefs they clench onto them harder it just creates more division and hinders the organization so if you ask the average voter what the biggest problems in this country are most of them will point to some economic concern they will say that inflation is the problem or that illegal immigration is drawing all of our money away from the taxpayers and, and therefore again that leads back to an economic problem the taxpayers don't have the money they need to, to meet their needs they can't pay rent right rfk addresses this economic problem meanwhile the republican democrat party their economic policy is merging. It's been slowly getting more and more similar over the years since right around Reagan's presidency. Meanwhile, the cultural divides are the things they focus on. So all of the things you see in the news about the Democrat and Republican Party are about abortion, right? Or they're about LGBTQ rights. They're not about economic policy. Again, why? Well, it seems to me that uh, the... Both the Democrat and Republican Party, the Uniparty, has been captured by corporations. So RFK looks at the collective product that the, the Republican-Democrat paradigm has brought us, and, and he blames the, the division for the failures of that Uniparty. He points out the, the corrupt state-corporate merger that we have going on, where the, the corporations are puppeteering the media and the media corporations are propping up corrupt candidates who then feed back economic policy that benefits the corporations who are again those corporations buy the ad space in the media it's a little circle of profits a little triangle of profits there and that's what that's what's implied by the state corporate merger the media tells you who to vote for that media is funded by corporations who sell traditional goods and services and then the, corp the, the candidates that the media props up go into office and write economic policy that benefits the corporations buying the ad space in the mainstream media. So that's what state corporate merger means. And RFK wants to break up all of the state corporate corruption. Okay, And the way he plans to do that is, first of all, he's going to He's going to give right economic policy that enables people to, well, to buy houses. He's going to give people, young people, cheap, or low interest loans to buy houses, which is something they can't do right now because of the inflation, right? So 
as the inflation rises and all of these large corporations buy up all of the housing, well, before you know it, you have a young population that doesn't own houses. They're all owned by large corporations, and those large corporations basically become oligarchs. They control everything, right? They, and if you can't live somewhere, what's, the insin what, what's insinuated if you can't afford housing? Well, you're going to be on the street. People are going to be increasingly living on the street, and increasing poverty leads to increasing crime and chaos. So by, by focusing on unity, like RFK does, by, by you know, throwing these culture divides aside, he is encouraging people to focus on the economic issues, and he's focusing on them himself. When you create unity within the working class, it enables the working class to come up with free market solutions to the wealth inequality, okay? And what those free market solutions look like is labor unions, labor strikes, worker co-ops. Those labor movements are necessary in a capitalistic economy to solve the problems that are caused by wealth inequality, to, to solve wealth inequality, in fact. So beyond that, though, he also, as I said, with the, with the housing policy, the, the loans he's going to try to give to young people, the, the low interest loans, that's a different kind of solution. That's not a free market solution. That is a top down government solution that we could consider communism. We can consider government solutions to economic inequality, communism, right? That is a top-down reallocation of the means of production. A bottom-up reallocation of the means of production is capitalism, right? In reality, it doesn't matter which solution we choose. If the working class is not organized, if class consciousness is low, then both the communistic solutions, the top-down solutions, and the capitalistic solutions, the bottom-up solutions, they are going to fail. And that is why wealth inequality is rising. It's because class consciousness is low. It's not because the Democrats are pushing top-down economic policy. It's not because the Republicans are pushing free market capitalism that is destroying the economy. It is because the working class is disorganized. It's because class consciousness is low. So if class consciousness rises, then the success of those labor movements, again, the labor strikes, labor unions, worker co-ops, when class consciousness is high, those labor movements succeed more. When class consciousness is high, the working class votes for better people and the top down solutions succeed more. This is what RFK is trying to get across to people. He's trying to show you why He's trying to show you that it is the division that is actually the cause of the problem. It's not capitalism. It's not communism. It's not the Democrats or Republicans' fault. It is the entire. It's just the division that created the dichotomy between Democrats and Republicans. It's the division that created the dichotomy between communism and capitalism that is actually the problem. So, how? What else is RFK doing? Well, he also puts a lot of emphasis on the chronic disease epidemic, okay? And what that means is, you know, we have rising rates of heart disease, obesity, uh, autism, uh, gender dysphoria, depression, anxiety. All of these, these chronic diseases are rising very quickly. And if we ignore, if we treat the symptoms, our current solution to these problems is to treat symptoms, right? We, we allow big pharma to... to you know, charge an arm and a leg for some depression medication, and yet more symptomatic individuals are popping up. So we can treat a symptomatic individual with medication, but if we're not solving the original cause of the problem, then that insinuates that you know, more symptomatic individuals are going to keep cropping up everywhere. That's what's happening. So again, he focuses on this chronic disease epidemic because he wants to get to the bottom of it. He's sick of, RFK is sick of treating the symptoms. He's sick of allowing Big Pharma to profit off of our sickness. So what does he do? Well, he, want, he asks questions. If we look at when this chronic disease epidemic started, it was like through the 80s or 90s, right? And it's been increasing ever since. He asks the hard questions. He says, well, maybe it's vaccines that are causing this chronic disease epidemic. Well, that has caused the mainstream media to label him as an anti-vaxxer. RFK is not an anti-vaxxer. RFK is a pro-vaccine safety advocate. He believes that we should look deeper into these vaccines in order to determine whether they are the cause of part of or all of the chronic disease epidemic. 
another conspiracy theory that people will say RFK attaches with or identifies with is he says that uh, cell phones or cell phone radiation is causing cancer. He didn't say that. What he said is we need to study. We need to look deeply into this issue and determine and, and, and ensure that cell phone radiation is not the cause of some or all of the chronic disease epidemic. Another issue he looks into is glyphosate. Glyphosate is a chemical, it's an herbicide and pesticide we use to treat crops, to you know, basically kill bugs and kill weeds, etc. Right? This increases crop production, increases uh, you know yields, right? Crop yields. So it increases profits, right? So we are putting all of this glyphosate into the soil. It's killing, eh, it's killing all of the, the microbes in the soil, and it's it's perhaps getting into our bodies as well. We know this because through urine samples we can see that we are we're pissing out glyphosate. So RFK wants to look closely at glyphosate and make sure it is not the thing causing some or all of the chronic disease epidemic. He is asking questions, and the mainstream media has painted those questions he's asking as, as, anti, as conspiracy theories. He's asking questions. He, and if you look at his, uh, his running mate, his VP, Nicole Shanahan, she, is, she has said she's going to use AI to dig into the data in order to solve the chronic disease epidemic. These uh, RFK is asking questions, and people have turned the questions he's asking into conspiracy theories. He's trying to solve the chronic disease epidemic, and we're attacking him for it. Okay, do you want to be a victim of big pharma? Do you want to be a victim of the food industry who is feeding you poison, or do you want to fix the problems? Do you want to fix the soil? Do you want to stop the glyphosate use? So that our food has a, it has the micronutrients it needs to make us healthy. This is another thing that RFK is is supporting. He's supporting regenerative agriculture. This is perhaps the problem, the cause of all of our problems. This is this is where it all starts, right? You are what you eat, as they say. So if we're eating food that is treated with pesticides and herbicides, and, and we're we're over tilling all of our fields, and we are we're monocropping, right? We're destroying all of the biodiversity in the soil. Again, that overtilling, the, the monocropping, and the herbicides and pesticides destroy the microbiome in the soil. It destroys all of the biodiversity. There is an entire food web of life that is necessary in the soil to basically create the, the, the circle of nutrients that our food needs to grow healthy, right? In order for our food to have micronutrients, the micronutrients have to, the, the soil has to be alive to create the, the conditions that enable that food to have the micronutrients. This is why we have to fertilize our soil every year. It's because we have destroyed the biodiversity in the soil. We've destroyed the soil microbiome. This is what glyphosate does. When you put that glyphosate in the ground, it kills all of the, the, the mycorrhizae, it kills all the microorganisms, and then those microorganisms can't create the, the, the conditions that allow the food to be dense in micronutrients. So the food that's growing out of the ground that we're eating is deficient in micronutrients. Now we're deficient in micronutrients. Now we're unhealthy. By extension, we create unhealthy socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures. So why, why are the Democrat and Republican parties capable or able to create all of this division? Perhaps it's just because we are a bunch of sick, unhealthy people who don't have the capacity to see through this, these divisive narratives because we are unhealthy, because we, our bodies are not functioning optimally. The solution is simple here, okay? You fund regenerative agriculture. You fund the farms who are going to move away from the agricultural methods that are killing the soil. What that means is we stop using glyphosate, we bring back the, di the biodiversity to the soil, we start eating locally grown food instead of food that's shipped thousands of miles across the country and world in general, right? This is might be the source of all of our problems. The soil might be the reason we are our socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures are failing us. And if we fund regenerative agriculture, we fix all of our problems. It doesn't even matter if if the, if we continue to tr be divided because once we fix the soil we fix our bodies and our bodies become healthier and by extension 
Well, the, the socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures will be fixed too. But uh, other reasons why I'm supporting him. Well, one broad reason is that if you look at RFK's history, he spent four decades fighting corporate pollution and, and big pharma. He has spent his entire life building a career basically protecting you. He, he's, he's, lead, he's led by example for four decades. He never had political aspirations until recently. And I think the reason he has political aspirations now is because he realizes that this isn't sustainable. The Democrat-Republican paradigm is creating so much division. The system itself, both the Democrat and Republican Party, are so dependent on creating division between each other that they've both been bought by the corporations. And that, again, that's why the economic policy is merging. That's why there is so little difference between the economic policies these parties put out. If you look at Biden recently, you know, he's, he's given some, out some student loan forgiveness, right? But he's not addressing the thing that is causing the student loans to, to accrue in the first place. He's not, he's, he's treating symptoms. He's treating symptoms in the same way that Big Pharma treats symptoms. He's treating symptoms in the same way that we, the, the economy treats symptoms, right? We need to get to the source of the problem. And I think that means we have to, we have to stop allowing people to profit from treating the symptoms. We can't allow the, the food industry to keep feeding us unhealthy food, which leads to chronic disease. And then that leads to big pharma medicating us for our entire lives, leading to all of those profits. And, and, and again, we need to learn to stop treating symptoms for profits, and we need to learn to treat the causes, okay? This is what RFK wants to do. And the reason we are so busy treating symptoms is because of that state corporate merger that I pointed out, okay? The, again, if we keep, if we remain entrenched in all of these cultural divides, we hinder our organization. And that's what RFK wants to stop. He wants to break out of these par this Democrat-Republican paradigm. And what better way than to elect an independent president? Now, let's say RFK gets into office and he can't pass anything. He can't get a single economic policy passed because Congress gridlocks him, right? Which is honestly what the Democrat and Republican Party do, right? The only thing they pass nowadays are, are defense spending bills. Let's let's imagine that he gets into office and passes nothing. Does that mean his campaign and, and his uh, presidency was a failure? Absolutely not. Why? Because there is there's a, a grassroots movement here. And I think Bernie Sanders, I think Bernie Sanders started that movement. And I think RFK kind of is carrying the torch now. That grassroots movement is basically recognizing that our division is the problem. And a perfect uh, indicator of that grassroots movement is the recent success of the UAW union, the, the United Auto Workers Union. That union represents Democrats and Republicans coming across, uh, uh, organizing across culture divides to take back the control of the means of production that they are creating. You have to understand that the problem isn't the Democrat or the Republican down the road. The problem is that you can't organize with them. And the state and corporations are organizing better than you to take advantage of your lack of organization. You have to be more organized than the states and the corporations. You have to be more organized in that state corporate merger. It's not to say every politician is corrupt. There are some good politicians and we should vote to keep them in office. But if your politicians are voting for more of the same, if they're voting for more defense spending, they're not on your team, okay? And that's another thing. RFK talks about the military-industrial complex a lot. That is a phrase, the military-industrial complex is a phrase that Biden, I don't think Biden has ever said the phrase in his life. I, I know Trump has, not as much as RFK, but I can't vote for somebody who doesn't openly address the military-industrial complex because what that means is that they, they are complicit to it. It means they are perhaps funded by it. Why does Biden not call out the military-industrial complex? Why, you know, a lot of people like to call Trump anti-war. Well, he didn't start a war during his term, but you know what he did? He dropped a lot of bombs. He dropped 
more bombs than Obama per per year, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. Now, Biden, Biden didn't stop it either. Biden started some wars. Bottom line is that the Democrat Republican paradigm is failing us because it has been captured by by corporations, and that state corporate merger is is has infiltrated all of the government agencies that are meant to protect us. Okay, the FDA, for example, the Food and Drug Administration is meant to ensure that things like glyphosate are not killing us. It's meant to ensure that vaccines are safe. But yet, huh, we, 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 we basically hide those conversations, those tough conversations, and we label anybody asking questions like RFK, we label them anti-vaxxers, anti-vax conspiracy theorists, right? Again, we have proof of unification here. RFK is drawing from both political parties. Okay, he, he's he's bringing uh, he, he's bringing to light the chronic disease epidemic. He's bringing to light the the fact that young people can't afford houses. And one more thing I didn't mention is he's anti censorship. RFK is is sick of the censorship in social media. And again, the corporations, the, the media corporations, including Google, Facebook, Twitter. YouTube, not Twitter anymore. I guess I guess Twitter has uh, been purchased by Elon Musk. So it's, it's now a private corporation. It's not publicly funded or publicly traded. But those corporations are purchased by, or rather, they they control the media. They control the media narratives, right? Just like Fox News and CNN. So it benefits them to support the the candidates that will go into office and again support the economic policies that benefit their bottom line so again back to the division aspect if you can't understand why your opposition is voting the way they are and you decide to write your lack of understanding off as the other person being stupid or them them just being uneducated what's that going to get you it's not going to get you anywhere it's not going to can persuade anybody to vote for your cause you have to leave behind the division. You have to learn to work together across the culture divides. And what that basically means, you have to learn how to play devil's advocate. You have to seek to understand your opposition better than they are, better than they can. You need to be able to argue your opposition's point better than they can. This is what RFK is very good at. RFK is good at entertaining arguments. You'll hear him use the language often. He will say, I can make the argument. That doesn't mean he supports that argument. He recently said, I can make the argument that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Trump. You may have seen that clip, you know, psych circling around the internet. Doesn't mean he agrees with that argument. It means he's entertaining that argument. It means he's playing devil's advocate. It means he is thinking about other, he's thinking about all of the, the ways that his opposition might think in order to better understand his, his opposition, in order to better understand the world and come up with solutions to the problems again you can't come up with solutions to the problems if you are just pointing at your opposition and insulting them and that's what trump and biden do most of the time okay it doesn't work this is why we need to elect an independent in this country now I, there's other people i like uh, i i am i like marianne williamson i think she's a good candidate but ultimately i think rfk has a better chance so uh, again to kind of summarize this you have to learn to prioritize your identity as a human above your identity as uh, above your identity with any subgroup any cultural subgroup okay and what that does is it creates the unity that's necessary to create the organization to vote for the right candidates to organize into those labor movements again <laughs> between socialism cap or communism and capitalism it, it doesn't make a difference which solutions we choose whether they're top down or bottom up the fact is, is that bottom-up organization has is the prerequisite for any top-down solution. So if you want to elect politicians who will write that, if you want the economic policy to fix the problem, you have to first elect the politicians who will do it. The Democrat-Republican parties are not doing that. And that means that you are not organizing from the bottom up. It means that class consciousness is low. Okay, the, so the sociology is the underlying fabric that guides socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures. Sociology describes the relationship between humans in a society. So if that relationship is shit, if it's 
if it's characterized by division rather than unity, then the, the socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures will suffer. And then there will be a ruling class that develops to take advantage of that division. And that's what's happened. 50 years ago, I don't think that... 50 years ago, the Democrat Party was, was a lot different. They were fighting for the people a, a lot more effectively than they are now. And it's because there has been a consciousness among the ruling class who has developed to capture that Democrat, that Democrat Party. The Democrat and Republican Party are a uniparty now. They, they don't work for the people. And the, the proof is in the pudding. Man. You, can't, you, you have to look at the results over the past 20 years that the uniparty has led to and realize that it's failed and it's increasingly failing. Okay? So, to... Again, even if RFK doesn't doesn't succeed even if he loses he's carrying the torch and whether he continues to carry that torch in 2028 or whether he passes it on to somebody else it doesn't really matter because there is a fire that's starting in the working class and that fire is characterized by an economy rather by an understanding that the economy is failing them and that means they have to organize there's the class consciousness is like a wave it goes up and down over time you know every 50 or 100 years and when a generation realizes that the economy is not working for them they organize and that means they that class consciousness rises and it, they fix the problems and, and eventually a couple generations later they forget they forget why they organize they forget they forgot the need for the organization, and they start electing corrupt politicians again. And then, well, the state corporate merger, it, it takes over the system again. Before long, you have you have a mess again. State class consciousness moves up and down throughout time, and we're on an upswing right now. The only question is, what type of revolution we're going to have? We can have a peaceful economic revolution, or we can have a violent revolution. We can have a civil war. It's up to you. Okay, and in the future on this channel, I'm just going to say that I'm going to be uploading videos kind of showing you around the little farm I'm starting. And I am hoping that this farm builds into a worker co-op of sorts, where I pay my, my employees hopefully the same wage I make. That's the goal here. It's not, that, it's not that I believe in pure communism, but if my employees are doing the same work I'm doing, I, I believe in communist. I believe in, in them making the same wage I am. Now, if you're a doctor, maybe you should be making a little more money than me. But if they're doing the same work I'm doing, why, why should I be making more than them? Again, I, so whether RFK gets elected or not, I'm going to be building a regenerative farm here. And it, it, I'm going to do what I'm going to do regardless. Because I believe that's the, pro the source of our problems. I believe we need to start feeding people healthier food and that starts in small on small farms it starts in small communities right hopefully i can feed my community healthy food at dirt cheap prices that's the goal after all i mean if you look at a forest it doesn't need much much care to, to take care of it planet earth is, is is an organism that is very good at keeping itself alive and you might have to water plants a little now and then you might have to you know, I have to buy some tools, but by and large, you know, farming is a pretty cheap endeavor if you're doing it in a regenerative manner. On the other hand, if you're stripping all the micronutrients out and spraying everything with glyphosate, it's not going to work very well, okay? So, again, the reason I'm voting for RFK, the primary reason is that he's he's has integrity. He, he doesn't point the finger. He doesn't insult people. He has grace. And beyond that, the man is wicked smart. If you actually listen to him debate people, he'll shut anyone down in the debate. I look forward to a debate between uh, RFK, Biden, and Trump because on that night you will see you will see political opinion change quicker than you've ever seen it change before. RFK will flip the polls overnight, and I, I hope that debate comes. If Biden and Trump choose not to debate each other. I need you to ask why that is. Why are your presidents refusing to talk? What is, if people, if the leaders of the free world are refusing to talk to each other, 
why would you vote for them? They are afraid to talk to each other. And, and, and I think that's a symptom of a, a much larger problem. I think that's a symptom that they're self-censoring themselves because they know it's, it, it's detrimental to them if they talk in front of the public. Ask yourself that. Ask yourself if you are going to... Ask yourself why or how you could vote for somebody who wouldn't, isn't willing to debate their opposition. Thanks for watching.